Around 2006, when I was 15 years old, my parents and I lived in a cul-de-sac. My nephews, who are almost my age, would often ride the bus to our home, where my brother would pick them up later. We had two options. We usually went with, as far as stops. One, we would get off early at an apartment complex where we could take a very short trip through the woods to get home before the bus got there. Or two, wait until the bus got to our actual stop. My nephews and I would usually choose the former. One day, I had just made it outside to see what the other neighbourhood kids were up to when a very tall man approached me. I've always been fairly tall for my age, but this guy was huge. I asked your friend across from your house if he wanted a bike, but he already has one, and I thought you might want it instead. I remarked that I had indeed mentioned wanting a bike to him before, and that I was interested in the one he was giving away. It's just across the woods at my house, he said. And me, being a naive child, agreed to follow him. His house was on the upper level of the corner apartment where we usually got off the bus. He directed me to a large closet door besides the main entrance to his home where the bike was held. I inspected it and was like, yeah, looks good. I'll definitely take it if you don't want it. Oh, if only it were that easy. Well, why don't you come in and chat for a bit? He asked, and I once again agreed. Now, I realise especially after typing this out right now, how I was basically an easy mode kidnapping at this point, seeing as how I don't think anyone knew where I was, but it never solidified in my mind for one reason. I was as big as most full-grown men at 16. Who would want to try to kidnap me? right? I walked in his front door and immediately noticed a pair of binoculars sitting by the window with a chair positioned oddly beside it. He sat in the chair next to the window and I sat on the couch. He asked me to tell him about myself, so I did. We went back and forth for about 30 minutes in what seemed like innocent talk when I made the suggestion of going home, which he did not like. Where do you have to be that's so important? To which I told him, Joey's. Joey will be there when we're finished talking, he said. His tone was dominant like an abusive father speaking to his child. At this point, my danger alarm was finally going off. This guy was a lot bigger than I was, and he was closer to the door. What did he want with me? I wondered. I continued on with the small talk, which seemed to calm him a bit. I noticed that he liked talking about his childhood. It was all he talked about. After three and a half hours, I made the suggestion of going back home again. This time, he seemed okay with it. He walked me outside to the bike and repeated at least half a dozen times to come back and visit him. The bike sat much higher than I was used to, but I was able to start pedalling when I rode off. 
looking over my shoulder. He watched me until I was out of sight. Fast forward a few months. I obviously never visited him after getting creeped out. All of my friends knew about him, and it was a joke amongst us where we called him Herbert from Family Guy. Except this one six foot four inches and about 250 pounds. One day, I get something in the mail. It was a black envelope with big red polka dots all over it. Inside, it had my name and said, just for you, just because, with a $50 bill inside. I wondered about who it might be from, but hey, 50 bucks. Hell yes. Summer came around, and my friends and I were starting to smoke. The usual hangout spot was up the hill in the woods, a bit out of the way from the trail we always took for the bus, which just happened to be directly behind my house. I was visiting family at the coast when I spoke to Joey on the phone. He said it was later at night when they were all smoking in the woods and noticed someone looking in my window while I wasn't there. They said he'd gotten really close to the window, walked to the edge of the house and peeked around the corner and then went back to my window. It scared them bad enough to hide. They never confronted the person, or saw who it was. We did make the suggestion that it was Herbert though. Months later, I had stopped getting off the bus at Herbert's house. Instead, I would get on the opposite side of the bus and kind of stand against the wall so he couldn't see me. People poked fun at me until one girl on the bus screamed at the same stop. She jumped to my side of the bus and said, He looked right at me. He was looking out the window. He was looking for you, wasn't he? It scared the hell out of me. One day, I was standing in a circle, talking to Joey and my nephews, when Herbert walked up with a jump rope in his hands. He just interjected into the conversation and was like, Does anyone want a jump rope? My nephew was like, Yeah, sure and took it from him. I don't remember much of what he said, except for exactly this. Y'all should come and see me sometime. He looked me dead in the eyes with the angriest stare and said, because I know when people are lying to me. My friends all talked about it later like, what the hell was that about? I don't think he likes you. I got off the bus one afternoon in front of my house when I saw my nephew running down the hill with something in his hand. You have to read this. This guy is a freak, he said out of breath. Herbert had given my nephew something to give to me. It was a black envelope with big red polka dots on it. Inside, it was obvious we had a misunderstanding somewhere. You've ruined what we could have had. I knew since the day I met you, we could be special. It's ruined now, and it's all your fault. Why have you shunned me? If you start now, I might forgive you 
and we can go back to normal. Was the rough summary of its contents. Keep in mind that I had spoken to this guy once when all of this started. The envelope, the window watching, the way he worded things. It was clear that he thought about me a lot and had this whole thing planned out. I immediately showed my parents and to this day, I have never understood their reactions. That's really weird. I don't want you over at his house again. No way. If that was my kid, I would have beaten the guy's door down and confronted him. But then again, that could have caused some more serious issues. I moved in with my brother until I graduated and moved out on my own at 18. Still, it crosses my mind from time to time. I have a feeling that if he could do it over, I would have never rode away on that bike. Hello everyone, Sinister Shaf here. I hope you enjoyed day 19 of Shaftober. Today's story was the polka dot envelope by Hayat76. Thank you for letting me narrate your story. If you enjoyed this video, then please remember to like and subscribe if you have not done so already. Also, share this video with your friends. You can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter at Sinister Shaft. Thank you for watching and as always, stay sinister.